So yesterday during the major was the official reveal for Operation Solar Raid, which, uh, gotta say, one of the nicest looking operators in the game. I was just gonna upload our bear reactions in the server, but, um, I realized a lot of it was very, like, we were all talking over each other, and it was a lot of, like, hype, it was a lot of, like, oh, this is so good, and then no one thinking about it, which is why we thought Grim and Sens were gonna be so fucking busted, or at least Grim. Since we kind of called, it was going to be eh. But, um, I realized over the course of the day that they put up the entire, like, the entire season page. And that's where people were, um, were getting all the patch notes for the next season. And, uh, I'd rather go over that than all the really hype, like, theatrics. So, uh, let's just go right into it. Because I'm, I'm actually really fucking excited for this seat. There's a lot that I'm really excited for. And there's the new operator, Solace. For anyone who didn't get to see what Solace does, uh, her whole thing is she's just IQ on defense, which I'm still not sold on. So this is what she does. She can ping gadgets with her little headset. She pings five of them. They don't track. That's an important thing. They don't track. It is literally just a ping, like if you were on a camera and just hit Z, or whatever your ping button is. So she pings five. She can't use her weapon when she's in the gadget. And the gadget has a limited range of 15 meters. So you do have to be like on top, not on top of, but you do have to be vaguely in range of what you want to ping. And uh, it is on a cooldown. At the bottom right there, you can see it's on a cooldown. So uh, yeah, I'm not, in, I'm still not sold. I'm still not sold on her. But after seeing what they've done with her on the, um, on the alpha, which is what you're seeing right now, I'm a little slightly more convinced she's not useless. I don't, I don't think anyone's going to, like, full-on main her, and that's that. It's she's, They're a one-trick now, but I think I see a little bit of util utility. I see a little bit of justification now. I'm just, I'm not sold. I'm just not sold yet. Anyway. Uh, P90, which, eh. ITA-12, decent shoddy. SMG-11. So, I'm willing to bet if people are going to play her like a anchor... And keep her on sight. Shotgun SMG. Mark my fucking words. And then Bulletproof Cam Impact. The new map, which I would like to point out, I called it. Back during my Brutal Swarm prediction, I called it was going to be the Night Haven map from the comic. For, um, I think it was Brutal Swarm. It was either Brutal Swarm or the one before that. But I called it was going to be Night Haven. Like, that area. Uh... I haven't seen much of the map because I'm not a big content creator. Yubi hasn't, you know, contacted me for my 50 YouTube followers, I'm just saying. Uh, cross playing cross, cross progression. You now log into your Ubisoft Connect account and get your content no matter where you play from. With cross progression, your progress, currencies, and items are shared across all platforms. So if you have, the way they described it was, if you have 40,000 renown on PC and 20,000 renown on, like, Xbox, you have 60,000 total. To use on either or or if you have and honestly they didn't have to do this but it's really fucking generous that they did if you have 600 credits on one account and 400 on another you have a thousand credits just to use anywhere additionally your ub connect account will get one free alpha pack and that's just a just just to celebrate that's going up the big thing and i will say this is going to turn off a lot of people from crossplay but i still sort of enjoy it it's not as great but i do understand it console is going to be one pool so playstation xbox i don't know if siege is on fucking switch but fuck it switch if you're playing on any console platform you're in one pool pc and amazon streaming service which I just found out is a thing that is the other pool so you've got the console pool you've got the pc pool they will not inter you can't they're not going to interact and I kind of get it. Because console siege is very fucking different from PC siege. Trying to play controller versus mouse and keyboard is a fucking nightmare. And I understand why they're keeping the pool separate. I think it's... I think it's a bit disin... Not disingenuous. What's the word? I think it fucks over a few people who were really looking forward to playing with their friends on PC. I know in Circuit City we have one person who got a PC just to play with us who was looking forward to crossplay, and thank fuck they got a PC because we did not know it would be 
separate pools until now. Reputation score display. The reputation score opens it, yeah, enters its beta this season, letting the players see their reputation standing for the first time since the system deployed in June 2020. So it's been actually going for a while. Holy fuck. With the beta, players can learn what their standing is without receiving positive or negative effects based on that standing. This gives all players time to learn what effects their standing they're have, yeah, their standing could have in the future and adapt to the new system before receiving it. So basically they're telling you, hey, you're a toxic piece of shit. Maybe stop or, you know, fuck around and find out. Reputation standings are a placement giving the players to show how their in-game actions are viewed. If you've played Overwatch, that is literally just the endorsement score. You know, if you have an endorsement of five, you're a fucking community god. If you have an endorsement of one, stop saying slurs in chat. The goal is to provide feedback to our players and promote healthy interactions while discouraging toxicity. Good. Good. Like, Siege... He, here's the thing. Every time I've interacted with someone in the Siege community who isn't Circuit City or Empire, they are the most toxic motherfucker. I think the only exception to that, the only exception, is I had one person saying in the fucking video I did on Solace, they, there was one person saying they were gonna be o that she was gonna be overpowered, and I gotta say they were the nicest person I've ever seen in the Siege community. I don't think they're you know hundred percent right. But I appreciate that they were just straight up and to the facts about what they were saying and not just, You're dumb, actually. They're overpowered and actually you should kill yourself and understand. I'm glad they didn't do that. They are the nicest Siege player I've ever met. This right here, the reputation thing, I'm hoping will give us good, nice players. So, dude who commented, I politely disagree, but thank you for not being a dickhead about it. In the future, this may look like rewards and boosted in-game earnings. So basically, if you're nice, you get things. If you're bad, you get less things. There are five standings, with one being the lowest and five being the highest. These standings aren't shared with other players. So no one else can see your indoor, your reputation. Okay. The reputation section now shows the player's reputation standing in addition to active penalties, such as reverse friendly fire and muted text chat. So if you have reverse friendly, you'll know. And you should maybe stop friendly firing. We've added a how it works guide to the reputation section for quick access to information on the reputation system. This guide also outlines some potential positive or negative impacts that the reputation standings should have in full release. So basically, here's how the thing works. Be nice, you get a good score. Be bad, you get bad score. Ranked 2.0. I was a little underwhelmed and I want to see how it works first. But I'm not going to talk shit about it because I am excited. Your rank is no longer decided by MMR, but by how many rank points you win or lose after every match. So instead of getting kicked all the way fucking down to copper because you suck shit and you should uninstall. Now it's, you're down to copper, but that's your rank, that's not your skill per se. Each rank now has five divisions, with each division requiring 100 rank points to progress to the next. So, you know, silver five, it's you know, uh, like 15. Silver four, it's like 16. Silver three, da 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 A new rank called Emerald's been added between Plat and Diamond. I don't know why. Reasons. With MMR split off from your rank, it's now being called skill. Don't know if I like, be like it being called skill. While it no longer de decides your rank, it does determine how quickly you rank up. So if your skill is insanely high, then if you're playing in copper and you win, you'll probably get like a thousand fucking points for it and get back to where you should be. Skill is a hidden value for all playlists and will carry from season to season. So no one knows what your fucking skill is. You don't even know. Which it does eh, sort of annoy me, but I get it. No more placement matches rank because only your rank resets, not your skill ra rating. Okay. Squad MMR is no more and players can squad up with any of their friends. A new algorithm will adapt matchmaking no matter the variation in skill among squad mates. I don't know how I feel about that one. I do not know how I feel about that one, because I think, I think without some kind of, like, restriction of some kind, there's going to be some carrying to some degree. I do not know how I feel about just being, yeah, play with whoever you want. I think some games have absolutely overtuned it. I think this is beyond undertuning it. MMR adjustments or resets due to cheating are now adjustments to your rank points or reset to your rank. So your skill is unaffected. But now rank points are what gets fixed. Your skill does not change. 
for some reason. I don't get it. Ranked is getting a revamped reward system. Players get one reward for every division achieved through the season. Rewards are granted at the end. So what they showed on stream on the fucking the reveal was if you're say silver five, then you get like a little you get the charm. You get the little silver charm. You hit silver four, you get a pack. Silver three, you get like a silver background. Silver two, pack. Silver one, pack. So it's like charm, background, and packs. I don't know what else they're gonna do. Maybe weapon skins. I like this. Because now you get things that matter, which are packs and backgrounds. So that everyone can know that you were silver once. Question is, are you getting everything up to that point, or are you just getting what's at your rank? Which I guess would not make sense now that I'm saying it out loud. You're probably gonna get everything upwards. So you get everything from Copper 5 all the way to fucking Silver 1, wherever the fuck you are. Battle Pass Evolution. Battle Pass has evolved from its linear system into one with branching paths. Now you can plan your progression and get rewards you, you want faster. No matter which path you take first, you'll still be able to unlock all the tiles and complete your battle pass. Play matches, use your tokens to unlock tiles in any direction. One token locks one, yeah. Use breach charges to breach paths and open up shortcuts. Da 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 da. Basically, the way it works is it said what it is right now in Brutal Swarm. It is, if you hit rank one, you get a skin. If you hit rank two, you get a pack. If you hit rank three, you get a pack. If you hit rank four, you get a smoke background. And you know, if you're not a smoke man, if you're a fucking knock man, you don't get shit until like, you have hit rank 97. You get a knock background. Now the way it works is, you hit one, and then you get up or down. If you go up, you can get the smoke things. If you go down, you can get the knock things. And you can just kind of go based on what your main is or what you want. And then eventually, go back to the things you want that you didn't get before. I like it. It's, you know, it's okay. And I don't think the battle pass had any issues per se, except that it is so fucking tedious to grind. So thank fuck you don't need to do a tedious fucking grind anymore for the shit you want. Now you have to do about a quarter of a tedious grind for the shit that you want, and then a tedious grind for everything you don't really want. Shooting range update. New to the shooting range this season are shooting records. These records track every weapon and attachment that players tested so they can compare recoil patterns. And Basically, the way this showed this on stream is it's a new menu. Like, if you open the scoreboard in training range, it will now show every weapon you've used. It will show every attachment you used. Like, this was the Vert Grip Hollow Sight. This was Vert Grip Muzzle Break. It'll show everything. When you hover over them, it'll show the recoil patterns that you hit the targets with. It'll show you every fucking detail to figure out what you like and what you don't like. And I'm mad they're not showing it here because holy fuck, it was one of the greatest things they showed on stream. Accessibility! This one was fucking huge, even if uncomfortable. Team color customization is expanding on operator devices and observation tools. Now the color preferences are reflected in the visuals of devices to help players identify what's owned by a teammate and what's owned by an opponent. For observation tools, the LEDs now match the chosen team's colors so players can recognize if it's used by a friendly or foe. So right now, cams are blue. Your friendly shit is blue. All your shit is blue. Team is blue. Now, if you have your, um, I'm trying to remember what if it's a colorblind or not. I don't think it's colorblind. If you have a team color changed, like if you have your team set to red, now if your team uses gadgets, they will show up as red because you'd have your team as red. So everything is red. Thorns are red. Malusi lights, like you see there, are red. Everything is red. And if you have the enemy team set to blue, uh, you will see their gadgets as blue. Claymore lines, I don't think they're gonna change. That was the first thing that came to mind. They'll be blue. Fuck it. I'm gonna lie straight up. I like this. It's really fucking good for accessibility and really fucking good because some people do not fully understand what is your team's, what is your opponent's yet. And that's more of a new player thing. Player comfort. Holy fuck, they impressed us with this. No friendly fire in prep phase. Friendly fire was revisited to align to its intended purpose, creating a fair experience for everyone. Having friendly fire active during prep phase has been countered to this purpose, so we've removed it from that part of the match. By doing this, we aim to reduce disruptive behaviors and the impact of minor mistakes. Players can still turn friendly fire on in the prep phase of their custom games with a new match setting, friendly fire and prep phase. I like that they kept it in customs. So, two big takeaways from this. Two big ones. One, 
Um, you can set up site now. You don't have to worry about destroying shit. You don't have to worry about hurting anyone. You don't have to worry about starting the match with, like, two health. That's fucking... That's great. That is so fucking good. Because there have been so many times we couldn't set up site. Because either an AFK wasn't moving, or someone was in the way where we wanted to make a hole. That is great. Second takeaway. If you have someone who is friendly firing on goddamn site, you can still put down your utility. You still have a chance to put down, you know, your Malusis, your cap cans. You still have a chance to put everything down before the rando TKs you, which they shouldn't TK you. But now you have a chance to put your utility down and still be helpful. Like, if you're aware that someone on your team on defense is going to friendly fire you, now you have a chance to put your utility down before they friendly fire you. Like, you can preemptively be ready. You can play your set it and forget it. You can play your Malusi. You can play your cap can. That is fucking huge for fighting toxicity and the toxic bitch can uh, if they're gonna help they can still help the team map ban update and holy fuck we loved this during operation solar raid the new map night haven labs cannot be banned good it'll still appeal to, uh, it'll still appear during the map ban phase but can't be selected the change is to ensure that all players get to learn and play on the map throughout the season peptic has only played emerald plains like, less than 20 times in the three seasons it's been up. Two or three seasons. Because everyone keeps fucking banning it. You cannot complain. And this may be controversial. I don't give a fuck. You are not allowed to complain about the new map being shit and ban the new map if you won't fucking play it. it like, play it three or four times. Get your opinion there. But don't ban it every single time. And then complain it's bad. And then complain there's no new content. Content's there. Stop fucking banning it. And now you can't fucking ban it. Deal with it. There's new shit in the game. Play with it. And if you don't like it, sucks. Go play customs with your fucking stack. Go play Oregon. Switch ability mode update. For Zofia and Capitao, switch ability mode can now be activated without equipping the device. So basically, Capitao and Zofia, they have two different types of ammo for the gadget. Capitao has the two bolts. Zofia has the two nades. Now... Instead of having to take out the weapon to switch, you can now just switch it without taking the thing out. That is not inherently a buff. That's just a quality of life thing, and I fucking love it. Bomb site marker update. Discovered bomb markers now stay on the HUD after dropping the diffuser. So, the way it works right now in Brutal Swarm. If your guy with diffuser dies, and diffuser's on the ground, you lose bombs. You actually lose the bombs on the map. Like, if you had the bombs pinged, those pings go away. And the diffuser is the only ping you see. Now, you still see the bomb pings. They just black out. But you still know where the bombs are. And the diffuser will light up. Which is fucking huge. Because not everyone has the game memorized down to a T. They even mention the bomb site markers are disappearing and cause some confusion, particularly for newcomers. So, if you don't know where the bombs are, this is going to be huge. And especially for new players, if you don't know where the bombs are, it gets confusing if they disappear and the diffuser is all you see. So this is huge. Drone strafe speed for controller. The drone speed when strafing diagonally is no longer slowed when using controller. Drones will now move at full speed in all directions the same way they do when using mouse and keyboard. Good. I don't even have any deep comments. That's just good. ADS movement update. And some people don't like this. I like it. Some people don't. I understand why they don't. I like it. To rebalance the relationship between operator speed and health, all operators now move at the same speed when ADSing. Previously, slow operators were at disadvantage because of one-shot headshot, and many operators are faster than them in firefights. This change aims to level out the playing field because speed no longer brings an advantage to ADS. I like it. I understand why people don't like it. But I love it. For anyone who doesn't understand what that means, basically, if you have a Tachanka, a 3 armor, 1 speed, and a Nash, a 3 speed, 1 armor, if the Ash swings, she will be faster than Tachanka, but if Tachanka swings, it will take a fucking million years. So now, everyone just ADSs and moves at the same speed. Drone Cosmetics! The greatest thing to ever happen to Siege. After many late nights in the workshop, drone skins are ready to see the light of day. Skins will start rolling out for various operator drones, allowing players to personalize their favorite machines. New menu options are being added to access customization. That's it. It's drone skins. It's fucking great. Now I don't have to ask whose drone I'm looking at because I can tell by the skin and then be confused because I don't know anyone's skins. Operator price decrease. Kalyan Mamaya 10,000. Aruni's 15,000 renown. 
Thorn is 20,000. You know, pick them up. Well, my and Callie being 10,000, if you have 10,000, please buy Well, my. Out of all of these, Well, my is the best out of these four. If I were to rank them for who you should buy right now because they just dropped, Well, my Thorn or Rooney Callie. Callie's dead last. Like, it's it's a wide gap between Thorn and Callie. Special weapon skin, or seasonal weapon skin. The skin next season fucks. The solar raid skin fucks. I, I fucking love it. I'm going to buy it day one. See, I didn't even realize before. It's got little circuit board texture on the grip. I did not notice that the first time. I fucking love that. Operator balancing. The part that everyone loves to make content about, including me, because uh, I like views. Ace. Reduced damage of the AK to 40 was 45. I don't know how I feel about that. I would have to actually get a feel for it in-game, but I really do not like that. Because, first of all, that's going to affect Fuse too, who really does not see that much play. But, um, Ace getting reduction, oh, kind of okay. Now the solo randos won't just auto-lock him and take Diffuser and run into sight with their Black Ice AK and then die all the way and then Diffuser's on site all alone where we can't get it. Alibi. The Prisma is no longer detected as an enemy when thrown outside. Removed the 1.5 from the MX-4. This is the most anti-spawn peak, anti-runout thing I've ever seen. We have literally complained day in, day out about alibis counting as enemies. So the entire game you're distracted by opponent detected outside. And then everyone runs out and you don't know because there's alibis outside. This is the greatest fucking thing they have ever done in the history of this game. And I'm very much exaggerating. And removing the 1.5. I... Eh. That is... That's not even, a, like, a nerf to how good Alibi is. That is a nerf to using Alibi as the de facto run-out spawn peak operator. And I am all for it. Because holy fuck, run... I am fine with runouts. I'm not fine with... Throw all your alibis out, now you're playing mind games, and then you run out. That shit's annoying. Aruni now has three health and one speed. Okay. Weird. Doki has one health, three speed. Was two, two. Good. I think Doki really fucking needs it. I don't think... Do if your Doki is taking every gunfight in the game and needs the two health... Maybe don't play Doki. Like, as a support... That is huge. As someone who wants to get to cams, or get to phones, that is good. Echo is now a 2-2, was a 3-1. Why? I don't know, I don't know how I feel about that. Like that's, that's fucking weird for someone who wants to be like an anchor, even though every Echo player will like just hide all game. That's, that's a fucking weird one. Ella. Now a 2-2 two, two was a 1-3. I think overall that's going to be a net nerf. I think that's a net nerf. Because now she has one less thing she's competing with Thorn for. So now Thorn and Ella are both 2-2s two on defense with a throwable gadget that are basically proxy alarms with different effects and a deployable shield. And now I just... I think if I were to pick between Ella and Thorn... Now that Ella's a 2-2 and not a 1-3 reliable roamer. I think I'd rather Thorn. I think this is actually going to hurt Ella more than help. Finca increased the first kick and vertical recoil of her LMG. I still do not think they're doing... Here's the thing. LMGs are harder to control, yes. I don't think they're doing any of the things they need to do to LMGs to make them harder to use. Literally, all they have to do... This is... I want to see them try it and see what happens. Because I still play LMGs. LMGs still do the exact same thing they've always done. I want to see them take LMGs. All of them. Every LMG. Give them insane horizontal kick. So that you can't just full auto with them. And just, just see what happens. Let's just see what happens. Fuse. AK damage. That's going to hurt. Reduce first... Yeah. Increase first kick and recoil on his LMG. Jackal, increase the mag size of his... Is that his AR or is that... No, that's his AR. 
Okay. It still doesn't really compete with his SMG. Malusi, three health, one speed, was a one health, three speed. Flat fucking nerf. And... I don't think she's dead. I don't think it's one of those nerfs where it's just like, character's dead, can't play her. You play Malusi, you're throwing. I don't think it's that kind of nerf. I think... It's going to hurt. Because Malusi as an anchor is just a weird concept. And now it's going to be harder to put all your things down. So now, Malusi's are going to be more closer to sight than they would be previously. And that's going to fucking hurt. Nock increased vertical and horizontal recoil of the S FMG9. That's her little, that's her spray SMG. Okay. I don't think that's the issue with Nock. I don't think that's why her pick rate goes up, but okay. Osa's a 3 health, 1 speed, was a 2-2. Two, two. Good. I think it makes sense for the character who carries a shield all game to be bulkier. I think that makes sense. I don't think Osa was sprinting to carry the game. Sends, now a 1 health, 3 speed, was a 3 health, 1 speed. I had all day to think about this one because this is one that they mentioned. I don't... Yeah, I think they did mention it. Um... I don't know if this makes sense not mid, but it helps make sense not mid. But the fact this is all they're doing to sends, they're still pretty fucking mid. Sledge, three health, one speed. That kind of hurts. That's That just kind of hurts. It'll help Sledge take those vertical duels when he's smashing the floor and shooting down. But I think it's I think it's still pretty much a nerf. Smoke, vertical and horizontal for the F and G9. Same thing. Thatcher is now a three health one speed. Weird. I don't think he was I don't think Okay. Thunderbird is a 2-2 two -two from a 1-3. Okay. I didn't know Thunderbird was an impressive force that needed a nerf? Question mark? Zero. One health, three speed, was a 2-2. Two, two. That, not only do, is that a flat fucking buff, that makes sense given his whole thing was climbing pipes and being stealthy. I don't think Sam Fisher was taking firefights to the face. Unless I missed that installment of Splinter Cell. Zofia, three health, one speed. So now your options between, like, the iconic entry breacher, eh, entry frags are slow, but big gun, and stun, or fast, but, eh, gun, and first kick vertical recall of the LNG. Tweaks and improvements. Operators now keep the same hip fire spread at all- What? Also, for the record, I did not read this section beforehand. I didn't realize this was here until I saw the little background. Reduced overall movement speed, aiming down sight to match three healths. Already mentioned that part. This part here. Okay. Weird. Progression bar, the progress bar for some hold input interactions now accurately reflects the amount of time players actually need to hold the input. I'm too tired to understand what that means. Got just playing for pickup. Uh, AMD shit. Added keywords next to the action reminders make it easier for newer players to understand what action they'll perform. These can be deactivated. So now if you get the icon for like vaulting, now it'll say vault. Notifications page has been redesigned to improve readability and streamline interactions. I love accessibility. It is now possible to mark a notification as read without deleting it. Notifications tile in the player hub will show the number of notifications that are unread to keep track of new messages. Markers now stick to the side of the screen when not in view. That is huge. Because there are so many times I've been aiming at an angle. Someone will go like ping two and I'll... Oh, over there. Like, I won't find it because there's no way to care on my screen. This should lessen the, ne the need to turn around to find a world marker. Players can now start an online custom game, even with one team empty, as long as there's more than one player in the lobby. So now you can just have five people on one team. In a custom. It's good for content, I guess, as long as it doesn't auto-kick the game for having no one on the other team. Added Nighthaven laps. And then it bug fixes. Which I don't think anyone wants to fucking read. Overall? Overall? Scrolling up. Holy fuck, there was a lot of scrolling. Overall? Not a bad season. I am very fucking excited. Like, I am very, 
very fucking excited. Like, all the quality of life and reputation shit they're adding, I fucking love it. This is gonna be another one of those seasons, just like fucking, um, just like Vector Glare, where the operators, eh, but all the changes they're making are fucking great, especially the player comfort shit. So, Operator eh, looks mid. I'll play her for a bit when she drops, because content, and I already bought the yearly pass, so I'm going to get her anyway. Operator's mid until I try her. The shit they're adding this season. Holy fuck. I am so ready. Day fucking one. I am going right the fuck in. That's Solar Raid. That's everything coming up, unless they add new shit. In which case, they add new shit. Peace.